Hello everyone, 안녕하세요 and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindy. I've been learning Korean for about 10-11 years and uh, a lot of you sent in some really awesome questions regarding learning Korean. I hope I can answer them uh, well today. Uh, so let's get started with the first question. What do you think about using K-dramas as a listening and mirroring practice? Would you recommend it? Otherwise, what free resources do you recommend to improve listening and speaking? You might find it hard as a beginner because of the speed at which Koreans naturally speak Korean. It can be a very fast language, there's a lot of slang, some words sort of uh, liaison or mush into other words. If you're not at intermediate, upper intermediate level, it's going to be very hard following along with a K-drama. I would rather say stick to a script, so uh, I can recommend SpongeMind, which is a YouTube channel and podcast where they also publish the transcripts of uh, the videos. That is something that is slowed down to a pace for learners, and you can have a transcript that you follow along, you can pause it, it's a lot shorter and more structured uh, than using a K-drama. In K-drama, there's nothing wrong with using it, but uh, it's going to be hard, so you have to be at a bit of a higher level. As for other resources um, to practice your Korean speaking, I have a really awesome app that I would love to recommend. So today's sponsor of this video is Hi Local. Hi Local is a drop-in app for language learners, so you can think of it like Clubhouse, but specifically for language learning. There's a huge base for Korean. You can just go in, listen to people teaching or talking Korean, join a group, uh, practice your speaking, and make new friends. This is the first time. Oh, yeah. Yes, I've never heard of it. It's so different. We're talking about Lee Sang-hyung. Ah, Lee Sang-hyung? Did you get married to Lee Sang-hyung? No, I don't. Then tell me about Lee Sang-hyung. Oh, Lee Sang-hyung. I'm personally... You don't need to see anyone's faces, and you can just practice your listening or speaking right in the palm of your hand. Is that right? The palm of your hand, yes. <laughs> Sometimes I doubt my English. The best thing is that it's 100% free, and it looks like it's going to stay free for quite a while. Apart from just being a language exchange app where you can meet people and talk, there are a lot of teachers who are hosting lessons as well. If you're just starting out with Korean, don't worry, because there are many beginner-friendly lessons on HiLoCo as well. I've used Hi Local a few times. Some of you recognized me from YouTube, which was uh, kind of intimidating and kind of exciting. Uh, so if you're interested in getting Hi Local, you can use the link in the description. It's my personal link, so you can click on it and also follow me there. The next question we have is from Bea asking, how long did it take you to actually be able to express yourself freely in Korean? <gasps> Fantastic question. Again, as I always say, it depends. So I, it depends on what you consider freely express. For me, I would say the turning point was really around the two and a half year mark. This might sound really long for some people, but that was really where I remember there was this distinct moment where I was like, oh my goodness, I understood everything this person said. And without needing to think what's the word or translate in my head, I was able to just have it flow. It could be much faster for you if you're immersing yourself a lot more, and it could also be very slow if you are not practicing Korean. So don't use my example of two and a half years as like, okay, by two and a half years, I need to be comfortable to speak. You could reach there in like nine months or five years. Again, it depends. But I remember I was at a Korean festival. It was like a food festival. Somebody was asking me about like how long I've been learning Korean, why I'm interested in it. Of course, these are topics that I was uh, able to talk about easily. Talking about why I'm learning Korean, it was something I'd been practicing a lot. Like People would always ask me, like, why are you learning Korean? And I'd been able to answer that question so many times, like, oh, 그냥 취미니까 한국말도 배웠어요. These kinds of phrases I'd been using a lot. Number one, because the topic was easy for me, talking about why I'm learning Korean, I was able to feel really fluid. If somebody was asking me about politics or history in Korean, even now, at my level after learning for a decade, I would be like, ooh, I don't really know the words. So can you really say that I can express my thoughts freely in Korean? Yes, for some topics, but for other topics, not so much. And that's the beauty of learning a language. There's always going to be more and more that you can learn. Then connected to that question and similar to early questions from Noel Noel 123 what free resources do you recommend? When did you start feeling comfortable speaking, writing, and reading Korean? A friendly reminder that all the free resources I recommend are on my website. As for the different skills, I already told you how long it took me to feel comfortable speaking. However, with, with writing, 
I was pretty comfortable writing Korean at an early stage. My handwriting was terrible when I was a beginner, but I would write Korean every single day of my life. I remember sitting in school, I was still in high school at the time, and I would write my notes half in Korean, I would write my journal in Korean, and just by writing every, every, every day, I felt so much more comfortable to uh, write long and fast sentences in Korean. Maybe around the two year mark of writing Korean every day, I realized that my handwriting was becoming more natural and more native, and um, I was just comfortable to write super fast in Korean. Uh, reading, again, if I know the words, if it's a topic I'm familiar with, no problem with that. Maybe um, at the same level of my speaking, reading progressed. But now if I'm reading more complex things regarding different topics or studying, from the to studying for the topic exam rather, uh, the content of what I'm reading is really hard. And I feel that my reading slows down when I encounter words that are unfamiliar to me. And speaking about the topic exam, uh, someone is asking, I am wondering if the topic exam is worth it. Uh, keep up the good work, you're amazing. 고마워요. 저도 고마워요. 감사합니다. And then someone else is asking, any advice for jumping from topic level 2 to level 3 or 4 in 7 to 8 months? Okay, both of these questions are regarding the topic exam. The first one, is it worth it? Very good question. Yes and no. Depends on your goals. I have a blog post that I would like to recommend about, is taking a language exam really worth it? Reasons why the topic exam would be worth it is it's a standardized way to measure your Korean ability, but it is not 100% reflective of your abilities to speak and communicate in Korean because uh, they don't test your speaking, they just test your writing in a very specific format. You're only able to pass the topic exam with good results if you use the exact structured format of reading and writing that they give you. It's not a representation of your natural ability to have a conversation in a cafe with someone or answer job interview questions or collaborate with coworkers. So it's only good because everyone else who has taken the exam has been tested in the same way. And that way, governments or employment agencies or universities can say, okay, based on the framework that we have, you are at so-and-so level. It's not going to show them how you are able to think on your feet or communicate naturally. I also think it's a good idea to take the topic exam if you are looking for motivation to learn. For me, I was really stagnant in my Korean learning. I felt that I'd hit a intermediate to advanced plateau and I was not learning new words. I had to have this goal to work towards to say, here's a whole bunch of new, advanced, unfamiliar words for me. I'm going to take this exam so that I can force myself within a specific time frame to learn advanced Korean phrases. So I did the topic exam last year. I scored level five, just a few points under the highest level, which is six. And it was really great for me to have that pressure to learn. But again, I don't use it as an accurate representation of my abilities in Korean. About the question of how fast can you progress from level 2 to level 3, it is quite a big jump to move from topic 1, which is the beginner paper, to topic 2, which is the advanced paper. Topic 1 has levels 1 to 2, topic 2 has levels 3 to 6, if I remember correctly. I wouldn't say it's impossible to do it in 7 months like you asked, but you're gonna have to build a really solid study plan for yourself. And the best advice I can give you is to work through the past papers a lot. If there's anything you do, just repeat, 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 go through all of the past papers. You're gonna find how they ask the questions, what type of things they're looking for, what kind of things come up in the exams a lot, and uh, up your reading. The more you read Korean, the faster you're gonna get at being able to read it. And you really need to be able to read really fast in the topic exam, otherwise you're gonna run out of time. Not impossible to jump from level two to level three in seven months, but you really have to study super hard. I think I had about seven or eight months to study because the exam was postponed, uh, but I would say that's enough time if you study super hard. I have two or three videos that go into depth about how I passed the topic exam, what it was like taking the exam. Uh, just type in topic as a keyword in my channel and you'll find all the videos related to the topic exam. The next question by Miss 
something is uh, how do you retain grammar patterns? Grammar is definitely something that you're going to lose if you don't use it. There are so many grammar patterns in Korean. If you just use the KGIU Korean Grammar and Use textbooks, there you have beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And they are so full of grammar structures that you're like, when am I ever going to use this? Uh, so obviously it's important to be familiarized with the ones in beginner, maybe intermediate level. You have to force yourself to use it. I would just say uh, whichever ones are the most commonly encountered, maybe the ones like ninde or nika, these kinds of very common grammar patterns, you're going to learn them pretty fast because you're going to see them everywhere. For any other harder, more intermediate to advanced grammar structures, I recommend getting a textbook. You could use one uh, like Korean Grammar for Speaking. I have a, a video about that video review, or like I mentioned earlier, Korean Grammar in Use. Work through this textbook and check out the ones that you think you're going to be using in conversation, ones that look like, oh, this is a really useful pattern. Take a note of it. Uh, I have a video on how I study Korean grammar, which goes into much more detail on how I take notes and learn grammar. But my recommendation is once you have the pattern, go through all the example sentences, create your own sentences using it so you can get used to it. Really bottom line, once you've learned the structure, you've taken notes, you've learned how to use it in different contexts by creating example sentences, then force yourself to use it in context. Again increase your exposure to the language. The more you hear Korean around you, the more these grammar structures are going to pop up and you're going to say, oh, I heard that yesterday. This one popped up in a song and so forth. Listening and exposure is really going to help solidify that for you. What are the things a beginner has to tackle before attempting intermediate level studying and any recommendations for beginner or intermediate resources? I'll start with answering the second part first. I do have a really robust, uh, large resources page for Korean on my website. Everything that I can recommend, textbooks, apps, YouTube channels, books, blogs, everything is there. As for what should a beginner really know before they can move on to intermediate? I do find that sometimes we consider language learning to be too uh, black and white. We look at, uh, okay, beginner is this, intermediate is this, advanced is this. I have to finish my beginner resources before moving on to intermediate. I think that limits our freedom and creativity in learning a little bit. So don't get too bogged down about saying like, what is my checklist? before I need to move on to intermediate. Go with the flow and see what resources that you can find are comfortable at your level. For one though, I would say that beginners at least need to have a very solid grasp on Hangu, the Korean writing system, before you move on to intermediate resources. At a very beginner level, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could still get away with using um, romanized uh, Korean so written in English characters. I don't think that's a good idea though because you're not going to be learning the natural pronunciation and you're going to have problems uh, reading and writing later. So really get a solid foundation in learning how to read and write first. Uh, understanding the basic sentence structure is one thing you need to know. Uh, so do as much as you can to understand how sentences are formed. You can work through beginner lessons maybe on Talk to Me in Korean, any other blogs that I've recommended, and then you can get a textbook at an intermediate level. You don't exactly need to know how to fluently speak or get all your ideas across, but you should at least be able to have a basic conversation talking about introducing yourself, your hobbies, asking about the time, uh, where to find things, directions, these kinds of basic level things uh, before moving on to intermediate resources. The next question we have is from Avion. Avion. Um, how did you get over, if you did get over, <laughs> nice one, uh, being self-conscious about your Korean accent? Very good question, super valid. Two things here. Number one, actually working on your accent. And number two, just accepting yourself for who you are and not letting fear get to you. So the first thing you can do is just realize that this is going to take time. You're not going to sound like a native. I don't even sound like a native after 10 years. There are things that you can do. I have a video that is a few years old that goes into detail on how you can sound more native in Korean. You can check some tips on there, up your listening and speaking exposure, and over time you will ease naturally into it. The other thing you can do is really look into how do you position your mouth to pronounce certain words. It took me a very long time to tell the difference between all and all, and I had to have someone explain to me that all, you kind of open your jaw, all and all is really rounded. So you can go into maybe tutorials that you can find on how to really be 
positioning your mouth to pronounce these words. So that's the sort of technical side. The other side of the coin is making peace with the fact that you are not a native speaker. It's natural to have your beautiful Caribbean accent when you're speaking Korean. This is absolutely normal. So what you can do is just focus on a mindset shift. Really dive into it and ask yourself, why is this so distressing to me? Have people laughed at me? Um, am I worried what people are thinking of me? And ask yourself, why is that bothering you? Or where the source of that worry comes from? Specific to me, I never really worried so much about my accent because I knew that over time it would uh, ease out. And for me, the point was being able to communicate. So even if I didn't sound very natural, at least I was learning and able to get um, my ideas across. The more I studied, the more confident I felt, regardless of what my accent was like. Next question from Isabella, a general question. There are many people who try to learn Korean every year, especially with Korea becoming more popular. What separates those who continue to learn versus those who end up stopping? Yes, a lot of people start learning Korean because they're interested in K-pop or K-dramas. Every reason is valid. We're not going to be calling people Korea boos over here. But once you get to the intermediate level, you're going to realize this language is harder than I thought and it's very easy to drop off. It's normal. This happens in any language, not just Korean. What separates people is really the drive to say, I want to be fluent in this language. I have goals. I know I'm going to work hard. This is what I want to achieve and I'm going to keep going no matter how hard it gets. You are allowed to take breaks. It is going to get hard. But if you're just going to drop off, then surely the goal of being able to speak Korean fluently was not that important to you. If you really have that goal that you want to achieve and say, I want to be fluent in Korean, you're going to make time for it. You can tell a lot by a person by how they prioritize their life and what they make time for. I, I don't think there's a really profound answer I can give to that. It's just your habits. It's the small habits that fill up the big picture of becoming fluent in Korean. The last question I'm getting is from Erin, which is saying, I've been learning for two years and it's getting harder and harder to memorize words. How do you motivate yourself to remember? What brings you back to work when you lose motivation? What methods have you used before? Is it important to know? Hanji? Hanja? Uh, I need some tips. Okay, uh, lots of questions here. Let me start with how do you motivate yourself to remember words? What brings you back for motivation? I have many videos and blog posts about motivation, so I will leave you to watch those videos. Um, but I'll just say uh, at the top of my head, remembering why you started and looking back on your progress. Whenever I feel demotivated, I go back and say, hey, five or 10 years ago, I couldn't say anything. And now I am able to communicate. So congratulate yourself for the progress that you are making and tell yourself that the hard work does pay off, even if you don't see it in the short term. Number two, try and figure out why I am not motivated. Is it because I'm tired? Is it because the content is too hard for me? Is it because I'm burnt out? Figure out what is the source of your lack of motivation and tackle that. If you're just exhausted, take a break. There's no shame in taking a break from the language and coming back to it later. For me, um, I take it really casually. I remind myself that this is only a hobby for me. Uh, I only took Korean extremely seriously when I was planning to study in Korea or when I needed to study for their topic exam. So give yourself these goals if there's something you need to work towards. So like I said earlier, I lost my motivation and needed to take the topic exam so that I could get that boost of motivation and discipline back. That's one approach. The other approach is just taking a break, waiting it out, and slowly easing back into it. As for remembering words, yes, it's going to get harder the more advanced you are because you are not encountering these words so often. When you're a beginner, you're going to be encountering the most common words all around you. You're going to solidify them into your memory very fast. Once you progress to intermediate or advanced, you really need to up your advanced reading, speaking, and exposure. Uh, so that you can learn words about specific topics and themes. The other part of this question is, is it important to know Hanta? It's not important to know it, you can get by without it, but it's very beneficial if you want to learn vocabulary faster. If you know the Hanta root of the word, it's going to help you guess new vocabulary words or be able to group words and see the relation between them. For example, Hak is anything to do with school. Hakyo, school. Hakseng, student. Haki, a term in school. So if you know that hak relates to education, you might be able to guess the meaning of a new word or remember it easier. 
So again, not crucial to know it. You can get by without it, but it's beneficial. All right, guys, that is it for today's Q&A. If you would like me to do a part two, if I haven't answered your question, there were so many questions that came in. So do comment and let me know if I should do a part two of this video. All right, uh, 봐주셔서 감사하고 다음 영상에 봐요. See you guys in the next video. Bye.